Oi, oi, we are back again. It's been a while since I've done a little cheeky repair video, but today I'm going to be doing a set of um, rear wheel bearings on this big old bus, which is a Suzuki V Strom 650. I bought this uh, just for the commute to work, really. It's super comfortable, absolute mile muncher, and it's actually a bloody good bike to be honest with you. I absolutely love it because. Um, Obviously, we haven't done a video in ages. I sold the CBF. I bought this bike, Honda Fireblade, um, 2009 plate. Amazing, really fast. Probably going to kill myself on it. But it's very uncomfortable as well. So I bought this and I was like, oh, Mrs. can't get on the back. Um, and it's not really practical for using to work and back and stuff like that. So uh, I'll just keep this for the Sunday blast. And I bought this Suzuki V-Strom. I don't know, probably about four or five months ago, something like that. I bought that Fireblade back in, uh, what was it, November 2022. Um, done loads of work to it. It didn't need loads of work doing, but I've done all the valve clearances, stuff like that. I should have really made a video, but it was way too long of a job to keep filming it, so I couldn't be bothered. But absolutely amazing bike. I'll, uh, I'll show you in action one day, but let's get cracking on this. So... I noticed the rear wheel bearings needed replacing because when I put it on its centre stand to clean and lubricate the chain, when I was spinning the wheel, um, it was making a horrible like grinding noise, like crunching and grinding. And at first I thought it was something to do around with the rear caliper, maybe the pads or something, but on further inspection, I noticed that the wheel was, the noise was actually coming around about inside the wheel there on the actual disc brake side. Um, and also it has quite a bit of play in the wheel. It's hard to show you obviously because I'm filming this on my phone. But if you grab the wheel at 12 and 6 o'clock, there's a little bit of play there. So you can hear that. So I believe the actual bearing on this side is starting to probably not far away from collapsing. So I'm just going to crack on. Take you guys along with me in case you have a big old bus like this and wonder how you do rear wheel bearing replacement. Um, first off, I'm just going to take this chain guard off, just literally two bolts. Probably makes my life a little bit easier when taking the chain off and on. And then I'm just going to crack the actual spindle or the rear axle nut off and slide out the actual axle here. And the rear wheel should come away freely, hopefully. I don't know if I have to touch these adjusters yet um, to slacken the chain off completely. I'm wondering if I can take this out and the rear wheel will move forward. Let's see. Right, so chain guards off, literally just two Allen key screws, hold that on, easy enough to take off. And I've took off this rear axle nut, which is a 24 mil. And there's a little plate there as well, just take that off. And before I actually take the actual rear wheel off, I'm just gonna crack these nuts off as well, just so I can take the rear sprocket off. So if I do that now, it'll be a lot easier than doing it when the wheel's off the bike. Sweet. Right, to crack these sprocket nuts off, I literally just put the bike in gear and just to lock the rear wheel. And then, yeah, holds it enough so you can crack that off or you can get someone to hold the rear brake, whatever way you want to do it. Um, yeah, so put it in neutral now and hopefully, you can see it's all loose. I can uh, slide this axle out and then see if it moves forward enough to get this, peel the chain off. Easy. All right, so got this out. Need a little bit of persuasion with a hammer and a punch. Um, but yeah, once that's out, I mean these, for example, around this side, they're just loose anyway. As soon as the axle comes out, so you don't really have to worry about slacking in that all the way off um, to make the chain loose enough. And now the wheel's nice and free. Just got to pull the wheel out. Make sure you don't lose these spacers. Should be one that side, yet. Yeah. And it's as easy as that. I'm just gonna get the wheel out now. Man, this bike is easy to work on. Right, so now the uh, back wheel is out of the bike. I'm just gonna buzz these nuts off now. They're nice and loose to get the rear sprocket off. I think you might be able to get away with it, to be honest, without taking the rear sprocket off. But when I'm punching, the uh, bearings out from this way towards me um, I just don't want to risk 
bending or damaging his sprocket so for the sake of just taking these nuts off um, I won't risk damaging this and also I forgot to mention that the rear disc probably I'm going to take off also just for when I'm punching the wheel bearings with inside the bike out this way I don't want to be bending this or scratching it up or whatever so I'm going to take that off as well I did forget to crack these off but hopefully they're not going to be too tight and I can just get the gun on it and whiz them out um, so just to show you this is the actual sprocket carrier bearing this is the larger bearing of the three because there is three bearings there's a bearing in here there's the wheel bearing there and behind this dust seal there's another wheel bearing and in between them two there'd be like a tube like a metal pipe so um, we'll focus on that in a bit but first I'm gonna focus on getting this uh, sprocket carrier bearing out and replaced Oh, and I forgot to mention that in here is a spacer also. This was flush, I've already tapped it out a little bit, but I've just put the actual sprocket carrier on these two axle stands. I mean, you can use a block of wood. I can't find no wood, so this will have to do. And I'm just gonna punch this spacer out with just a punch and a hammer. Like so. Spacer, there it is, punched out. That went in from underneath. It was quite corroded, you can see there, so it was to take quite a few whacks to get it out but it's out now now I just need to take this dust cover off punch the bearing out from this from the back get on that lip there and punch it through the front hopefully it comes out nice and easy so I've just levered this seal out facing that way up with just literally a screwdriver just get in there and pop her out and look at the state of this bearing I mean pop this seal off and there's all like little little bits of race like the bearing race in here it's all completely broken up you can see all the crud in there that's obviously just dirt and worn the bearing out and there's loads and loads of play so which thinking about it doesn't surprise me because this is where all the drive side is so this bearing is under a lot of stress actually so it makes sense why this one's absolutely kaput i'm not sure what the wheels ones are, the wheel wheel bearings are like actually but we'll see when we take the uh Dust cover off. I mean, this one, this one don't feel too bad actually, but whilst I'm here, I might as well change the lot. But so now, turn this around and punch the bearing out from the back. Hopefully, it comes out. Might get a socket or something in there or something. Push it out with. Right, so I've removed the bearing. So basically, what I did was I put it this side down, the stud side. Down. got a 30mm socket and I put it so basically you can imagine the bearing was sitting in this way so that would go on top of that you can see that side in there and 30mm socket fits perfectly around the inner part of that bearing there give it a few very hard whacks because they are tight going in it's just pressed in so a few hard whacks start to pop out but then it started to go obviously past this bit which this was sitting on the ground just put it back on there a few more hard wax it should come out nicely so all I'm going to do now is give this a really good clean up all in there and in there where the spacer sits and then put loads of grease on it and then go ahead and fit the new bearing oh and I did the new bearing is currently in the freezer I've left it in there overnight so the bearing is very very cold so it should have shrunk a little bit therefore making it easier to press it in so hopefully it goes in nice and easy right so that's all nice and clean in there I'm just gonna grease put some grease around here just to help the new bearing go in there's a the new bearing nice and cold straight out of the freezer and basically just fit it the same way it came out um, I'm gonna use the same all the old bearing to press the new one in because it's a perfect fit you never want to hit obviously the inside of the bearing when it's a new one going in because you can damage it um yeah so grease put the new bearing on top and then tap it in with the old one all right so that's the new bearing pushed in you can sort of hear when it goes all the way home and sits at the lip inside this uh, sprocket carrier you can hear the note change as you're bashing it in with a hammer with um oh. The old one and then you sort of like to get the old one back out flip it around you can see the lip 
between this new one and the old one, just give it a few taps and it should come out nicely. So yeah, so now I've got a new seal, a bit of grease around here, tap the new seal in gently, because you can destroy these quite easy, so just give it a nice little tap in, and then that's done. Then we've got to just do the wheel bearings. Right, and there we go. The seal is in, basically got it started with my fingers, and I did use the old bearing again just to tap it in nice and straight. So that is that all done. So now let's try and get these ones out. Um, I'm gonna try and reach through with a punch, see if I can knock the bearings out from, see if I can get on that lip there and knock it out. Let's give it a go, see what happens. So I've just spun the wheel round this side up, pulled out the seal. Again, just lever bar, pull a popper out. You can see the amount of corrosion. So this bearing's obviously got water in it. That's probably me going through all them folds. And I don't know if you can see down there, it's a bit of shit, but I'm just gonna get this punch and catch the inner edge of that bearing. So if I not bang it out here, there, seven o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock. See if I can punch her out from the other side. So that's that bearing out on the sprocket side. To be honest, it doesn't look that bad. It's well packed. Don't look like much water's got in there, so it must have just been corrosion under the seal around this section. But now that that bearing is out, you can see this tube I was on about. Take that out. So all I was doing is hitting the inside of this to punch it out. And I found it much easier to have the wheel standing up so you can sort of put your punch through, see what the, what the lip you're punching it out of, and it just shot straight out. So now it should be an easy to get that one out. And really, I can do it with the wheel standing up. I don't really have to take disc off, so that's cool. Right, so that's the other side wheel bearing out. And that side, I'm gonna give it a nice clean up. Regrease just around here and then new bearings that are nice and cold like the sprocket carrier just push it in with the old bearing and then obviously remember to put that tube in so put one bearing in put the tube in flip the wheel around put the other bearing in and basically that tube is just what the axle runs through so it's cool let's do that now all right and that's that so the new wheel bearings are in obviously don't forget that metal tube that's got to go between the two you'll know when it's all the way home when you're putting it in because just the note will change you can easily just tell um and that side's all in obviously do this on a plank of wood i'm not i'm definitely a piece of cardboard i haven't got no wood available so that's you because otherwise you could get a little bit of damage like that but you're not going to see it so i don't really care um so yeah basically just to put it back in reverse order and make sure you grease everything up so I'm going to put it all back together and hopefully I won't get no play. Obviously that wheel bearing is good. That one you could tell with loads of crud in there. So that was probably going to fail. And then this sprocket carrier bearing was absolutely knackered. So I mean that is, that turned turn very nice. That one's good. So two failed bearings out of the three. Oh, and I almost forgot to put a new seal on um, the disc brake side uh, and I cleaned up this spacer. I'm going to grease it up as well so it goes in there nicely you can see it drops in there before I had to punch it out. So, yeah, once it's done all that, greased up, cleaned up, I'll clean the axle up, grease it, and then, yeah, just reassembly basically. Put the wheel back on, it should be, should be good to go. Oh, and I forgot it'd be good to mention that when you've got this sprocket carrier off, just check these cush drives here. Sometimes, because they're made of rubber, they can split and stuff like that, but these ones are all good. So that's the back wheel all built up, ready to go in. Cleaned up these spacers, greased them up. So they're gonna go in nicely. They don't run dry against the seal. Same with that side. Nicely greased, ready to go. And all I'm gonna do now is is uh, clean this up best I can. I mean, you could make it better with a bit of 
bring a pad or something like that. But I'm just going to grease this up loads and then get the wheel in there with the chain on. And once it's all aligned, just slide this through. Right, and that's it, it's all back together. So, got the chain guard back on. Um, basically, I just wheeled the wheel inside the bike, slip the chain on when it's all like the further you go forward, just slip the chain on. Then you lift the wheel up, pull it back, and then align the holes, and then you can just slide your axle through. Obviously, making sure that your spacers don't fall out. But they're all good there. So, oh, and out of interest, these nuts um, go up to 60 newton meters. I did put a tiny bit of like low strength loctite on there um don't know if you have to but i just did the so 60 newton meters there and if you did remove the disc they go up to 23 newton meters and the big axle nut tightens up to 100 newton meters so make sure you put a bit of anti-seize on the threads here because i heard have heard of these nuts galling when you undo them and obviously you have to undo that when you adjust the chain but because i didn't touch none of these chain adjusters the chain doesn't need adjusting but that's all good um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give you a little insight of how to change rear wheel bearings on a Suzuki V Strom 650. I think the thousand will be exactly the same job. And this is a 2013 plate, and it was an absolute piece of piss to do this. So there's no reason why you can't give it a try yourself. Anyway, I'll see you next time.